I'll tell you what, I am so pumped up every time I hear that song. I almost let a, want to let it roll from beginning to end. Anyway, good afternoon. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show on WBLZSports.com. Look, this app is free. Free. If it's free, it's for me. It is located on Google and iTunes. This is Rudy Reyes. And we have a very impactful show for you today. Of course, Impact happens to be the name of the game today. This is Linebacker Tuesday. Okay, so I just made it up. But I can do that. It's my show. It's what I do. Anyway, look, I'm very excited, but I'm not very excitable, however. How does it work? I don't know. But always looking forward to differentiating what I do here on the Rude Dog Show to stay affluent and be aware of the various types of athletes and student athletes that I speak to on the show. So I decided to be Linebacker Tuesday because linebackers make the world go round. Well, in some people's world. And today is certainly no exception to that rule. When opportunities present themselves, an individual or business could commonly make mistakes as to what it takes to make them productive. Of course, we all know what that means, sometimes cutbacks, sometimes additions to teams, especially in the NFL, certainly fall onto their shoulders. Do they make the right decision? Is it immediately known? Is it immediately made aware of? That's a good question. And today we're going to ask a lot of good questions because, well, we only have an hour. So we're going to try to make the most of this hour. Look, sometimes change is good. I'm actually a component of change myself. And this week has changes all over the place. Kansas City Chiefs today announced they're releasing long time running back, a guy who gave his all while in Kansas City. And I'm talking about Jamal Charles. Look, it's 2016-2017 season was injury riddled. I'm not going to mince any words here because he clearly was not the back for the Kansas City Chiefs and really who they needed down the stretch. But when you think about a guy who was able to showcase who he was years previous, even in 2015, he had ran into some health issues. It's unfortunate, but it does happen. Father time is undefeated, and certainly it applies to Jamal Charles. And you could probably stay within the last, I don't know, three to four years, Jamal Charles has really battled to stay on the field. So it's unfortunate, but again, it's all about change. Making the change, is it a good change or a bad change? Nobody will know until it's all said and done. While another team this week, and of course, my favorite topic, as my next co-host can probably attest to, <laughs> he's on the other end of Pennsylvania. But look, the Steelers made a splash, huge splash today. And watch out, Scrooge McDuck, because Antonio Brown is swimming in a vault down the street from where you're at. <laughs> today was a day amongst any other in NFL history, one of the richest contracts who ever been signed, not only by a wide receiver, but anyone on an NFL roster in the last 50 plus years in the NFL. $68 million contract for four years. His signing bonus was $19 million. I mean, I can't even say 1900, much less 19 million. That's a lot of ducats. An annual salary of $17 million but only a cap at $13,618,000 and 30, excuse me, 618,000. See, that's, that's just, that, that's too much money. It's too much. I can't say it. I can't even get it out right because it's too much money. But look, Antonio Brown is really booming. Now, if business wasn't booming before, it's busting and exploding all over the place. And of course, the Steelers were able to land uh, an exclusive franchise tag on Le'Veon Bell, one of the top backs in the league last year. Uh, only, I think, dethrottled by an Ezekiel Elliott kind of guy. And not because Ezekiel Elliott's much more dynamic. I think the beginning of the year and the fact that he was playing three games more concurrently than Le'Veon Bell, handing that, uh, the NFL handing him a three game, four game suspension. He appealed one and this is where he's at now. But exclusive contracts are what you want, especially when you're franchise tagging. Any player, whether it be a quarterback, of course, the Redskins, franchise tagging, Kirk Cousins. Look, I feel if someone's going to franchise tag me, I feel like I'm being kept at Kmart. You're going to put me in the blue light special until you're hanging me out to dry with a tag on me and says not available till next year. So <laughs> that's, that's kind of where I'm at right about now. I can tell you that much. Anyway, everybody, please put a warm welcome together for my next co-host here, and I like to differentiate that as well by having guys on the show that have never been on the show before. 
But welcome, John Michael Salter, who does lots of great things, at John M underscore Salter on Twitter. The guy's a stud. I love talking to him. I had to have him on the show, especially today as he's spending his time. Everybody put their hater rate down because he's in Maui right now. Welcome, John Michael Salter. John, how are you? Hey. Um, I'm great, Rudy. I'm, I'm on with you. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here listening to you talk about uh Talk about Antonio Brown, and, and um, it's not fair. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> well, the contract's not fair? Oh, I don't know. I think he's a top wide receiver last year, has more receptions uh, and, and catches than anybody in the NFL. Oh, okay. I uh, just checked. Oh, Rudy, I'm, I'm going with this. It, it's not fair that the rich get richer. You know, uh, <laughs> the rich get richer? You know the team I support. Um, it's the, obviously on the other side of Pennsylvania. You might have heard about them bullies up there. Um, you know, we, we could have used them, you know, so I'm just saying it's not fair. <laughs> and, and yes, he is the best receiver in the <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what, Philadelphia Eagles are certainly on track right now to be one of those teams that uh, an onset of having having a rookie, no longer rookie, of course, head into his second year. And then uh, I, just, I just fall short when it comes to trying to find words that match their season and not, not the best of seasons. started out very promising. They're winners of four in a row, then all of a sudden it just switched. Something just turned off. You know what, though, honestly, when you re- when you really break it down and sit back and look at it, I think they did what they were supposed to do. Um, seven and nine, seven and nine was a. Uh, I mean, if you would ask anybody, any, any reader, especially any one of my readers, they would have, you know, they they would have said seven and nine would have been a great season. When it's all said and done, it's still Philadelphia, and unless we win a Super Bowl, it's a horrible year. Um, but I thought they did great. Um, obviously, you know, a few things need to be, uh, I guess, worked out, a few kinks, but they're on the uptick. We'll just say that. That's the positive way to say it, right? The uptick. <laughs> I, I guess so. I, when you look at what they what they were dealing with, and, and clearly, it was it was just such a flip flop season for the Eagles. I thought they were going to do much better, even with a rookie quarterback, even with some pieces missing. I thought they would be able to compensate on the line defensively, do that much better, especially in the secondary, and just be one of those teams that you really want to look for. And I think they're again they're on the rise. Philadelphia Eagles are certainly on the rise. And in all fairness, I think that that script may flip. They could end up being 9-7 this year. Just throwing that out there. It depends on what happens in the draft. I, I, I agree with it, and I'm going to quote you on Twitter. I want you to know that. <laughs> Good, everybody knows this. I'm on record. I'm on record, 9-7 for, for the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, look. <laughs> I, I just want to make sure they have they have somebody to blame. You know, I don't want to be. I'm tired of being attacked. Uh, so I don't mind if they go after you. That'd be fun. No, hey, I'm I'm down, down with that. Put a target on my back and throw me off a cliff. If they can hit me on my way down, then more power to them. I don't care. Whatever works. But look, we're talking about the draft here. And if you're not familiar with my next guest, then you are not ahead of the curve. Matter of fact, you find yourself in the back of the bus. This gentleman finds himself in the front. Welcome, Dante Johnson, linebacker, Robert Morris University out of Chicago, Illinois. He was a very solid chance. I don't know if I said Chicago right, but I, that's the best you get. He has a solid chance of getting an invite to an NFL camp near you. Dante, welcome to the show, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you for allowing us to go on with our, with our banter. How you doing, Rudy? I'm doing great, Dante. How are you? <laughs> doing good, man. Good. I'm glad to hear. It. I bet it'd be even better when an NFL team calls your name on draft day. <laughs> hey, I'm, I, I look. I pulled out my pulled out my Ouija board and I pulled out my um, my crystal ball for this one. Just just for this show. Just so you know. Just pull, just throwing that out there now. Look, this may come as a shock to some. Well, no, not really. However, you've been fortunate enough to be acclimated early on with a very athletic family. Now, when I say athletic, I don't mean that everybody works out and they sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, I mean that they're that they're ready to go. They're amped up. They can play any sport. When you hear the word touchdown or goal and even from three. But that's not who you are. It's a part of where you grew up, but it's not a part of who you are. And 
when I think about the types of diversity and the different sports that you played in this very highly athletic family, football was your chosen sport. And so much so that your passion drifted that direction and in turn you had played so well earning a football scholarship. Now, now look, that's no small task. Not everybody can earn a football scholarship. But what makes it interesting is that the school at St. John Catholic, now that is a school. If you're into Catholicism, that is your school. Now, the experiences you had while you were there had its upsides and its downfalls. What was it like to be in that household where any day meant game day? It was a great thing to be around, you know, just having that atmosphere of competing with your family members or your mom and dad, your sister and cousin or aunt or uncle. It just brings that competitive nature out of the whole family. And that kind of brought me into why I wanted to play football so much because football is such a competitive sport. Well, the competition, I mean, you want to slam dunk over your dad. I mean, you know, I don't know how that would work out if that was even possible, but being able to do it, I'm, I'm sure there were some salty moments where sportsmanship was almost questioned. <laughs> anything ha or, or So that can be translated into anything goes? Making up your own rules? Yeah, basically. <laughs> That's interesting. Very interesting. That's a dangerous family right there. Yeah, watch out. <laughs> Team Johnson will blow you down. Yeah. That's uh, watch out, people. Watch out. I hate to see what uh, tug of wars are like at family reunions. I can tell you that. That's got to be brutal. Hey, Rudy, I, I, I had a. I, I want to ask him. Um, well, one, one Dante. Uh, as far as being in the football world, we're all glad you decided with football. But I, I, I had to ask, you know, outside of football, who is Dante Johnson? Let let everybody know. Dante is a, a passionate player that plays football. He's a guy that's going to work hard and he's determined to make the team better. So any team that decides to pick me under the player that's willing to come in and do any role that the team needs, whether that be a special teams player, a starter, or a vocal, or a leader that comes in right away and uh, makes an impact. Oh, okay. Um, sounds like you've been working with Talking to a lot of scouts there. But as far as, okay, outside of football, who's that Dante Johnson? Does he love ballet? Does he break down? What, what is Dante Johnson? Who's Dante Johnson? <laughs> I'm just a competitive guy, you know. I'm a family person. I love being around family, friends, and outside the guy. Mm -hmm. just, Worse than being a it's kind of interesting that you should mention that since that's one of the reasons why you're on the show. Not because you're a student athlete, but because you have a very exquisite way of getting off the proverbial horse or throwing it 100 miles an hour and getting back on just to do it all over again. Would you say that would sum up who you are as a competitor? Yes. Yeah, okay, but here's why I'm asking. I have read you injured your ACL not once. I've hurt my ACL and it did not feel good. <laughs> By any stretch of imagination, I'd rather have my ear pierced than have an ACL injury because one short lived, the other one isn't. But it wasn't only once, it was twice. Twice on the same leg. How did that affect your mindset? Was it's something you clearly had to deal with. There was no way of getting around it. But did you feel as though it happened once, you went through rehab, which is very painful in of itself, just to go back and do it all over again? What was your mindset, and how do you believe that you had to try and stay in the game while on the sidelines in both years? I was something very hard to cope with. You know, I had different ways of coping with it. Um, carrying my ACL twice was kind of a, a blessing for me, you know. It kind of made me realize how much that I love the game. If I can go through this twice, you know. Most people, once once they tear it once or twice, they kind of, kind of fall off and kind of not think they can uh, get to the game again. You know, I was just motivated to prove myself that I could 
come to pull up their damn words and be better. Better is good. Getting better, well, is even better. But what's more interesting is that you had success with both rehabilitations and that your acumen was still very high. Sitting on the sidelines has to be the you know has not been the easiest thing for any player to do because they're watching their teammates go off and and work and sweat. While well, you're sitting there wondering, am I going to get another opportunity to play? And sometimes to dive this into a little bit more better perspective is that your mindset can take you down a road that you aren't ready to travel down because you're not a quitter. You're not a loser. You are on the up and up. How are you able to keep yourself sharp and, and in the game while on the sidelines, knowing that you wanted to continue your career in football and maybe make a professional career out of it. But growing up, I've seen those guys compete, you know, competing to what brings the best out of me. And watching my guys out there competing hard as they can and try to, try to win is something that I love to see. And it made me hungrier and brought that drive in me that I know one day that I'll get back out there and be with my teammates. You know, another part of your game uh, that stood out to me was your sideline to sideline ability. Um, but still, at, at at six feet, you know, some may see you as, as maybe undersized, you know, as an inside linebacker. Um, you know, when, when speaking to scouts recently, um, what have they told you about your fit in the NFL, you know, and your projection? Do they solely see you on special teams? Do they think you can play the inside position or the outside? What have they talked to you about? Uh, coming from a small school, you had to kind of work your way up. So kind of the role of a special teams player and then maybe into an inside linebacker. But I think with my ability, being kind of a tweener between a linebacker and safety, I can play both positions because I'm athletic and I can move sideline to sideline. I can cover those receivers. I can run back to my backfield. So to me, that's uh, the best way to describe me. There's a lot more descriptions for you, though. I'll be honest with you. There's there's so much more to you. You could have easily just quit, though. You could have just said, you know what? I'm hanging on my cleats. I'm calling it a day. And this is where I stand. But then here comes Robert Morris with a support system that you had at home. That's Maryland. Maryland and Chicago are kind of far apart, just like California and Texas. When you arrived at Robert Morris University, knowing that you wouldn't have your family there, did that mean that they made you feel more welcome at Robert Morris University between the staff and the teammates and alumni to know and make you feel as though you can be supported by them while being there? Yeah, Rob Morris is a huge fan. We have a, a huge family tradition. Kind of fun thing, funny thing is that I had two buddies from high school who uh, came to Robert Morris before me. But I kind of knew those. I knew those guys. So when I got there, I kind of knew that it was just like home. Home is where the heart is. What did you say, John? <laughs> home is where the heart is, or maybe where the. Where the football is? <laughs> you, you, made, you made a good point, Rudy. You made a you made a really good point. That's that's tough for any kid, you know, coming out of you know, you know, coming out of an injury and then being away from home. Um, what are some things, you know, that maybe you did uh, personally to to deal with, you know, the the longevity of you know you and your family, especially you being a family guy. Uh, what are some things that that it made it easier for you to deal with? I just find some people that, that I can hang around with, you know, that can potentially become my brothers outside of home. You know, you have those set of friends when you're at school, you have those set of friends when you're back at home, you know. You just want to create that bond between both. 
And uh, being a family man, I just communicate with my family as much as I can. You know, football it takes a, a lot of time, football and school. So whenever I could, I would talk to my sister, talk to my uh, mom and dad, let my mom go and ask them how they're going and stuff like that. Well, that's good. You, you can't stray too far from your family, especially when they're the ones that have been there supporting you the entire time, going to all of your games, talking to you when things aren't working quite as well as you want them to. But being there to assist, to talk to, and to mentor as well. I'm sure you did your fair share of mentoring while you were at home with, with your siblings, your younger siblings. Give me an experience because you're such a, have such a push harder mentality. No one's going to really push you back because you're too busy pushing yourself forward and you're headed in the right direction. But give me an example where you led off of the field. We can talk about touchdowns. We could talk about scores and stats. We could talk about all of that, but that's not what makes up a football player. Tell me about an off-field experience where you had to not only comfort a teammate, but be there as their aid to help them get through what they were battling. Uh, one example is when, uh, we get we get together as a team. We do this thing every year at Carla. And a group of teammates, I and a group of teammates, we go to the bottom of the town house. And we should support the kids that are going through um, trouble with their families, stuff like that. And, you know, when you do things like that, you find out some of your teammates are going through the same stuff as those kids are in around the down house. So when you find things out about your teammates, you kind of comfort them as much as you can. Yeah, Ronald McDonald houses are... Uh got some of the toughest situations to deal with. Those kids there, have, you know, they come from very rough lives. And almost when, when you go in there and you see a, a child and you think to yourself, man, how do, they, how do they get through this? Where do they go from here? It makes you feel real humble. Well, because they've been there. Some of them have been there, done that. Nobody has a perfect life. Everybody goes through things. But those situations, and I've said it before here on the show, I've said it in, in life in general. <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows my philosophy about things. But one of those philosophies is it's not the situation itself. It's how you handle those situations. So when I look at your accolades... You know, Dante, you know... When I look at your accolades, Dante, when you when you look at John, <laughs> I gotta get through this. <laughs> it's all right, man. It's all right. It's all right. Look, you were. No, that's it. Okay, no, hey, no, no problem. Conference championship for the first time in school history for one. Conference defensive player of the year for two, and a Cliff Harris Award nominee, which is not the easiest thing any player can get, much less a linebacker. What were your thoughts about not only winning the conference championship, but how did that change your your mindset, knowing that you went through the entire year and acquired Defensive Player of the Year and Cliff Harris Award nominee for the very first time ever? It was a great, great expansion, great feeling when the first conference in a lot more history. The team we cut together through adversity, team through all adversity, and we find ways to win. You know, some games are not going to be perfect. Some games are going to be perfect. stick together and find a way to win. And uh, winning those awards, it, it means something. Without my teammates, over, I wouldn't ever get those awards. So, uh, Frank, those are the 10 guys on the field who did my job. Those are not individual awards, those are team awards. That's fantastic. You know, Dante, with, with winning the with, with winning the uh, the conference championship this year, I mean, I mean that, that's a that's a that's a huge thing. Um, can you could you be able to point out a, a moment, a game, maybe this season where you kind of said to yourself, you know, we can we can really do this. We could we could really go ahead and, and win the championship. We can do this for the first time. 
Um, is there an obstacle? Was there a time that really turned things around for you guys? Where you guys felt like we're all the way in, you know, all the way in on this. Uh, I think I knew that because uh, everybody's motivated. The, the previous years have been so close, you know, and then we could never get over the hump. And then this year we finally got over that hump. We got our first conference championship. So back in summer summer camp, I knew we could do it. You know, we just had to stick together and uh, play the way we play and we, we took care of business. That's what it's about, right? Taking care of business as an individual player trying to make scouts recognize who you are and you're just not a face in the crowd but as a team that's where it's at recognizing that with your team without them you would have not been able to accomplish what you have so i have to run to a commercial break ladies and gentlemen coaches scouts gms owners be aware that there are great things coming out of Robert Morris University, and one individual certainly stands out amongst others, and that's Dante Johnson. He's a linebacker. He's ready to go at a moment's notice. Look at his film. The guy is a stud. He has a high character, high moral compass, and contributes in any way that he can to teammates. He's a team player on and off the field. Dante, how can these scouts get a hold of you? Uh, email or phone number. Phone number 240-750-9762. Email is johnsondante at yahoo.com. And my agent is Scott Bergman. Well, you're onto something. What's your, what's your Twitter handle so people can uh, tweet at you? Lauren, That's simple. <laughs> That's simple. Dante, hey man, it's a pleasure. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, man. It was a pleasure. Cool. If there's anything else I can do for you, let me know. I'm here to help and uh, hopefully get your name out there. And hopefully I'll hear it on draft day too. I'm looking forward to that. Man, you too, both of them. <laughs> I think I'm not the only one here. John, what are your thoughts? <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. That the last two or three minutes, all I'm thinking to myself is, the Eagles need linebackers after them. We could use speed, so come on over to Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm just selfish like that, so yeah. I don't pay me no mind. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> That's okay. The Steelers are deep at linebackers. I'm just saying. But you know, one more couldn't hurt. Just throwing that out there. you got to have a deep linebacker rotation. <laughs> hey, man, Dante, thanks. did you already play for an Eagle? I'm just saying. Well, I, d I did have... I had I had said join her on, on the show before. Yeah, uh -huh. Eagle, former Eagle. Great guy, by the way. Great guy. Hey, I got. Seth Joyner is uh, Seth Joyner is, is the guy Dante. You want to you know study that guy? I'm telling you, you you play half as good as him, and you're gonna have a 15 year career. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Always good. Father time's undefeated, but you can do it like James Harrison, 38 years old. Steelers want him, but there's been no discussion yet. I don't know. We're at commercial right now, right? No, this is not commercial. A commercial is not me talking. <laughs> I mean, I could do the voiceover, but, you know, I have to pay homage to Anthony Gilbert, who does tweet, yes, I said it, Anthony, you do tweet time to time. At Anthony, Agent 1, you can find him, new-game-plan, wants to change the way athletes look at agents because everybody knows that there's always a dark side to the agent industry, and he can certainly be the one to put the light at the end of the tunnel. Got to take a commercial break. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show at WBLCSports.com. Download the app. 
It's real easy. You just take your finger and you, and you press a button. Well, it's a virtual button, but a button no less. Find it on iTunes. Find it on Google. This is Rudy Reyes on the Redux Show with Dante Johnson, linebacker, heading into the 2017 NFL Draft out of Robert Morris University. This guy should get an invite, and if he doesn't, it's a crime. So someone get out the sirens. I'll be right back. This is the sheet. It's me all revved up. My face is now red. My ears are just freaking boiling. He's so raw. He's so raw. This guy hates it. Yeah, he had 51 touchdowns. 49, 49 total yards. I know y'all like them, but I gotta run. I know we don't have that. They're so good, man. They would win the Big Ten if they were in the Big Ten. You could be doing something vision based in front of you and reach down and grab a handful of insane goodness. Give it to him. Who knows? I'm frapping like a golfer. Very good job. Wow. You guys agree? I'm very impressed. Have you ever had a bad week? You know, you walk outside, step in a puddle, like grabbing you, walk outside. Are you, you stand on the curb and like driving by and splash blur on you? Or just rain on you? Not anyone else? I, I will tell you before you go any further, I cannot hear Chad when he speaks. Good. If you're listening to the sheet, man, I don't, I don't really know what we're doing. Every Saturday morning, 8 to 10 a.m., right here on WBLZ Sports. Doug Pepper painting a pressure wash. He has over 30 years of painting experience. He's interior, exterior, commercial, or residential. Doug Pepper covers it all. Is your house looking ugh? Call on Doug. Doug Pepper painting and pressure washing. 404-966-3361. Mention WBLC Sports and get a special We've Got Balls discount. That's Doug Pepper painting and pressure washing. 404-966-3361. Hello everybody, this is Blake Cole, host of Off The Wall Baseball here on WBLZ Sports. If you love America's pastime, then join me every Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern for the latest and greatest in the world of Major League Baseball. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential needs, Gen Service is the electrical contractor for you. The Gen Service team has the expertise, commitment, educational years to help you solve your electrical concerns. They have you in their best interest with helpful suggestions to accommodate your every want. Give them a call no matter the size of the job at 740-438-7173. And mention WBLZ Sports, you will get a discount. That's Gen Service, 740-438-7173. WBLZ Sports, we got balls, balls, I get a kick of that little girl every time I hear her. Anyway, welcome back to the Rude Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show on WBLCSports.com. Now, I know some of you have already downloaded the app, and if you haven't, you have the opportunity to do it now. Well, anyway, you you, you did. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look, download it. Good stuff. Always looking for even more listeners because I call it listenership. Yeah, I said listenership. You're on a ship, and you're listeners. You're, it's listenership. Anyway, welcome back to the show. This is Rudy Reyes. And there are two more sponsors I want to mention here. One of them is CereGumil.us. Now, you're probably saying, how did I pronounce that? It's C-E-R-E-G-U-M-I-L.us. They are the official, official, that screwed me up with CereGumil, official vitamin sponsor of Starling Marte, two-time gold glove winner who now has moved over in the outfield for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and of course, Pirates uh, playing today. They played yesterday, beat the Blue Jays anyway. Good stuff. Glad to have baseball back. Hashtag baseball is back. And of course, hashtag the Rude Dog Show. That will help you tune in right now. John, I look at Terrish Webb, and I look at his stats, and I look at him as a person. I have a chance to speak to every single player that I've interviewed on the show before ever coming on the show. And if there's ever a player who understands the meaning of loss as well as wins, 
and I mean that personally and professionally, Terrace Webb comes to mind. Does that sound about right? Oh, yeah. This guy was born and raised in Clareton, Pennsylvania. Not necessarily in your neck of the woods. It's on the other end of Pennsylvania. But but this guy has came a long way from early losses to later gains. Welcome to the show, linebacker, who's a beast for the Pittsburgh Panthers, Terrish Webb. Terrish, welcome to the show, man. How are you? Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate you coming on. I thank you for your time in advance. It's always good to have a a near Pittsburgh native on. I guess somebody who uh, has experienced a lot of trials and tribulations, but a lot of the positives that keep you climbing the charts, not only as an individual, but as an athlete. So thank you for coming on. Uh, no problem. Thank you for having me. Certainly. I have John Michael Salter on, still does some great things and on the other end of Pennsylvania for the, uh, for the, for the Eagles and the Eagle fans. Does a lot of good stuff, so welcome him to the show as well. Look, Terrish. Hey. I look at I look at your stats. You started all 13 games at free safety. You had 66 tackles, uh, six passes broken up, just a complete dominant free safety. Now, when I think of a free safety you played for Pittsburgh, there's one particular guy who comes to mind. I think you know where I'm going with this, John. And I believe you know as well, Terrish. <laughs> and that's Troy Polamalu. Now, because you played with Pitt, you played with him, you had a chance to play at Heinz Field. And when I think of Heinz Field, I, I think of that free-flowing hair. I, I don't think you have that type of hair, Terrish. But you do have a lot of attributes and that is speed, a freakish kind of speed, a speed that Troy Polamalu himself wished that he had, not to take anything away from his accomplished, one of the best free safeties to ever don the black and gold, but to get to where you're at right now wasn't easy, and it never is, and it shouldn't be easy. It should be a, a, a very long, sometimes arduous road. Our previous guest didn't have the arduous road, but you lost a component as a young man getting into adulthood. You were just a teenager. You were 13 years old. You had lost your dad. That's huge. That takes a toll on somebody from an emotional, personal standpoint. What was it like not having your dad from the age of 13 on upwards. And how do you believe that the School of Hard Knocks was there to help show you the light at the end of the tunnel? Um, the school of Okay, so you, you, uh, fast forward, uh, this is, um, John Michael Salter, so he's supposed to have one, Jerry. Um, fast forward, um, to your, uh, junior, senior year, uh, just, I had to ask you this question. Um, the James Conner, you know, cancer scare comes out, uh, not even cancer scare, James, James Conner comes out and makes the announcement about his cancer. Um, what were your immediate thoughts? You know, as someone who's already has gone through trials and tribulations, what were your immediate thoughts and how did it impact you? And how were you able to help James in this situation? Uh, at first, it was just kind of something that you really didn't want to believe in. Because, you know, me and James came in a pit together, so I look at him as a brother. So when I first heard the news, it kind of like broke me down. I actually started crying because I really didn't want to believe that it was true. 
in work. And he had like a team meeting and he had told the guys, you know, a lot of guys just took it hard because he just knew what James had in store and just for him to go through that, we were hurt for him. But you know, James is a very strong guy and it just pushed me because like a little after he found out he didn't have a chance, he really didn't let it get down on him. He would be out there working out with the mask on. I'm just getting my heart and this I can do it. It makes me feel like I'm just the one that I can do it. But I believe we push each other basically. And he, with him seeing us up there, it just motivated him to eat that cancer and be out there with us again. You know, it's kind of interesting. I'm here in California and I, I heard about this. And the first thought to myself was, is I've had family members die from cancer as well. And when I heard about him having this nasty disease that should have already been wiped out, of course, I think to myself, can James overcome this? Not only from, not only from the fact that the cancer has spread in certain, in certain areas, but how can he continue to play under the circumstances? The fact that he was able to, to some extent, showed the, the true grit of what a player is all about. And that goes in any sport. But since we're talking about the Pittsburgh Panthers, I'm sure that you felt that if he can do it, anybody can do it. But because you came in together, there was a bond. And that bond is still carried over heading into the 2017 NFL Draft. So then I have to ask you, because he declared, and you're headed into the 2017 NFL Draft, where do you believe that he would land in the NFL? Do you think that the Steelers would take another chance on a local guy, or do you foresee him going somewhere else? Now, uh, Terrence, no, okay, so we know the player that James Conner is, and we know whatever NFL team gets in is going to be, you know, it's exciting to put it into the table. Um, so let, let's, let's turn the table on you now. Let's ask you, what are your, uh, what are your greatest attributes as a player? And uh, do you think they, you know, do you think it'll, it'll translate over to the NFL game? I'm very athletic in the safety. I'm always told that. And what I think makes me stick out from other players in my football team, you know, ever since my freshman year of the game, it kind of slowed down for me. And I just come, tend to see things before they actually happen. Well, you've done it. You've done it. You've done it in 2015. You did it in 2016. You did it in your junior year. You have been on the go as one of the most reliant ball hawker, well, I'd like to call that a ball hawker. You told 28 tackles, you played 11 games at night at free safety in 2015. That is a ball hawk, and trying to force a ball out of would-be defender's hands is, then I don't know what is. You just keep getting better and better and better. But then here comes 2014. Not the best year because of an injury, season ending injury, I must say, on your knee. That was your that was the very first time that you had ever had a season ending injury of any kind. Your shoulder, your foot, turf toe, whatever it might be, but first ever season ending injury against Georgia Tech. What was it like sitting out? And I ask players this all the time because you have to recognize that strength doesn't only come from being seen or visible on the field. It comes from how you handle situations such as this. How did you handle the situation, and how do you believe that in the long run it would prove to be something positive for you moving forward? Uh, that, that, that is very painful. That was my first year actually taking over the PJC squad. And I just felt like I was on a roll, you know, everything coming along. 
and then uh, get that thing even in his injury. It just so hurt real bad. And just to be out there instead of working with the guys who brought to the meeting practice. You know, most guys, they tend to not really like practice, but when you're not actually doing it, you appreciate it. Just being out there, not being able to out there just to play with my guys, you know, I was just down. But I took the time being away from football and just to get, get better on a different aspect, such as watching more film or learning why receivers tend to run routes while they run or why they don't do the way they do. So I believe it helped me as a player just to grow and just to appreciate the game of football even more. Uh, Terrence, between um, the 2014 and 2015 season, like you touched, you changed position. Um, from strong to free safety. Um, what has been the biggest difference, you know, between the two positions for you? And where do you see your fit on an NFL roster? Uh, the biggest difference I would have to say was uh, the communication style. Because I'm free, you have to communicate a little more. Because you know we had a coaching change, so we had to communicate more with like the receiver, with the linebackers and the corners. And I think my best fit would probably be on the NFL roster as a free safety because I can cover. I'm a very good cover guy. And I'm versatile. I could play probably free, nickel, corner, anywhere in the field. You think of my skill. I'm just a versatile type of guy. I've, I've seen the versatility. versatility. I've seen it. 2000, let's just say, let's just put your career together in one full, full view. 45 games, 31 started. You had 11 passes broken up, five interceptions, and you had four tackles for lost total. That's fantastic. But we go a step further, backwards, into the time machine, if you will. In high school, you were part of Clareton's fourth consecutive state championship. That's impressive. That's impressive for high school. You had 21.4 yards per catch as a senior, 45 reception, 965 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Not only that, let's flip the script. Let's talk about your athleticism on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, you start offense. I see that. With the little eyes, the emoji, you know, with the eyes and the little eyebrows <laughs> on the top there. Finally trimmed, I might add, yet a 102-yard interception return against Bishop Canavan, all state class A by Pennsylvania sports writers. That's fantastic. But why did you switch to defense? You were so good offensively. Why the switch in, in college? I came to college after my senior year. Things that I would do more to help the defense side, you know, I just took it and ran with it. Well, you did. You took the ball and ran with it, literally. You, know, I, I, you took it away. <laughs> you took it away. Terry, Terry, I got, I got to ask you, Terry. You know, I know coming out of high school, um, coming out of high school, reading about you, I know there's a few bike special schools. But, you know, being a Philly guy, being, you know, with the Eagles, I got to say, I know Penn State was one of the teams. Uh, what, what, you know, what went into your final decision, you know, going to Pitt? Uh, well, I actually had two other of my best friends that had big division one offers. And there was a lot going into it. So, then I, my, my mom, she wanted me to be close. And actually, the day before Simon's Day, the two boys, two of my other boys that actually caught me, so we were on three ways. We were just discussing like our options and we had our options. And then it probably came down to it. We said you might have to just work together, go to school together and try to change the program. And that's when we ended up going to pit. Yeah. Titus Howard and Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd now with the Cincinnati Bengals. Not the Steelers, yeah. but that's okay. You know, I I still love Tyler. I got heart right here for him. You can see me, but you can't. I got pounding my chest. But Terrence, me and you are sharing something in common. Both born in September. Born in September. Pretty good. Pretty good month, I'd say. But that's just me. 
Maybe a birthday greedy. That's right. Football's warming up, right? Preseason rolling. There's a huge difference, though. Yeah. <laughs> You're born on the 7th. I was born on the 11th. Yeah, and everybody knows what day that was. Do you mind if I interject on this, Rudy? Do you mind if I No, go ahead. Just ask you this question. Say it. Terrence, I have to ask you this question. I read, you know, I read, you know, a few interviews from you, and uh, I read that you uh, you chose Aaron Donald as kind of, you know, one of your favorite teammates that you've ever had. What is something that Aaron has done or said to you that's kind of helped you with his draft process, helped you? With getting re getting ready for your career in the pros. Uh, the, the passion that he has, even him being one of the best with purpose, you know, those type of things in the pro right now, he still works the hardest. The first time I met him, or even seen him work, and know he said, stay positive and be patient, and everything will work out. It is. <laughs> it's working out really well. I'll say that much. Look, scouts. I know you're looking at this guy. Guarantee it. If you're not, you need to get some coffee or something to wake you up. This is Terrace Webb. Free safety out of Pitt. Pittsburgh Panthers. He'll be ready and available heading into this draft. So check him out. He's available. Where can people get a hold of you at, Terrace? Uh, I have all over Facebook. That sums it up. <laughs> LinkedIn, Twitter, <laughs> Facebook, uh, let's see, Tumblr. I don't even know what that is. Is that where you tumble down? He's on MySpace. Get him a job. He'll be on any of them. MySpace. <laughs> Does you just say MySpace? Is that, is that even a site anymore? I don't know. Hey. Uh, Anything, anything to get you a job. Anything to get you a job, Terrence. Get on all of them. I got you. <laughs> Social media manager. No, he's the manager of his own destiny. He's headed into an NFL draft. He ain't got time for no social media managing. MySpace couldn't afford him. He wants a football salary. <laughs> oh, poor Tom. <laughs> yeah, well, what do you do, right? I know Facebook's paying pretty good. But look, hey, ladies and gentlemen, scouts, coaches, Anybody out there who's looking for a guy who can pick the ball off, he's a ball hawk, not only does he bring his athleticism to a field, but he brings a sense of character and pride to what he does, and it shows in how he does it. We're out of time. This is Rudy Reyes. John Michael Salter joins me. Uh, John, where can they find your goodness at on social media? Oh, find me at Twitter. I'm I'm not as uh, I'm not as big time as uh, as Darius, So find me just on Twitter at at John. That's J O N capital M underscore Salter. Salt S A L T E R. Um, get on there. Ask me a question. Bother me. I'll bother you right back. Well, there you go. When push comes to shove, John can push it back. Terrence, where can everybody find you, and how can these coaches and GMs and anybody and everybody can find you on social media? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Southstaff underscore two. There it is. Gosh, how simple. I wish I'd have thought that when I put mine together. Mine's just at Rude Dog Reyes. But hey, this episode will be on the RudeDogShow.com as soon as I can get the editing done on it. It seems to take me a little bit longer in time. But anyway, hey, look, we're out of time. But I want to thank you, Terrence, for coming on the show. It's been a delightful experience for me. Uh, hopefully you had a good experience here on the show. And if there's anything I can do for you, you know, because we got that connect, that whole September thing going on. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you need anything, man, let me know. I'll be happy to help you out and uh, get you more exposure and do the best thing I can to help you get into this uh, NFL draft on a team. In the NFL, ladies and gentlemen, there is there are teams in the NFL, and they could use his services. That I can guarantee. So, Terrence, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you coming on. Not a problem. Thank you. This guy, again, another stud, back-to-back -back studs. It feels like I'm building a fence. Yeah, a fence. It's called defense.
That's right. I said it. Hey, see what I did there? Defense. Building a fence with studs. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you for joining me. This will be on the show.com. Throw me a like. I'm on Facebook. Also, check out the show.com for all types of great interviews with past guests, guys leading up into the draft as well, and not to mention Hall of Famers. Yes, I said Hall of Famers. And Jerome Bettis, uh, a little Heath Miller, a little Ryan Chazier, linebacker for the Steelers as well, and all types of great stuff. Check it out, therudogshow.com. If you want to become a sponsor of The Rude Dog Show, email me. Email contact information is all there. Again, thanks to my guests for joining me today. This is Rudy Reyes on The Rude Dog Show on WBLZsports.com. Hey guys, you guys are fantastic. Uh, thank you, Rudy. I appreciate you having me on, Rudy. Yeah, for sure, man. I'll tag you in it. Terrish, you're the man. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Are, are we still recording? No, 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 no.